Hi, and welcome. My name is Katie Johnson, and you are here to see some ideas for playing with the new Pick of the Patch bundle. Now, I say new because I'm filming this in September of 2023. So if you're watching this uh, significantly later than fall of 2023, then that bundle's not new anymore. But you're going to still get a bunch of ideas, number one, about things that you can do with pumpkin imagery on a card. And number two, you're going to see my thought process when I get a new set of product and just go to town playing with it. So um, a bundle, let's just define that before we jump into looking at the product. Stampin' Up, the way Stampin' Up defines a bundle, if you're not familiar with that vocabulary term, um, a bundle is a stamp set and either a punch or die that coordinates with the imagery that's in that stamp set. And the reason that they that they give a special name to it is because the first time it's introduced in a catalog, it's actually 10% off if you buy both of the products together. Because normally, I mean, the stamp set would work by itself and the punch or the die would work by themselves. But if you by the two of them together, you get a 10% savings. It's only the first year that it's introduced into a catalog. So if it carries over into a subsequent catalog, it won't carry that bundle pricing anymore. And to be honest, I'm going to convince you, I hope, as you watch this video and look at all the fun I had playing with it and all the ideas that I came up for using it, um, I think that if you don't already have it, you're going to say that you want it. So it was actually my plan to post this much earlier than what you're seeing it. Um, but my gosh, I had so much fun playing with it. Every time I thought I was done, like here's a stack of 10 cards, I'd come up with two more. Here's a stack of 16 cards and I'd come up with more ideas. So you are going to see lots of fun projects. All right, I'm going to flip my camera down. We'll take a look at the parts to the bundle and then we'll take a look at some of the things that I made with it. So here are the parts to the bundle, the stamp set, and the coordinating punch. You can see the stamp set has six images down here that will stamp pumpkins for you. Actually, I'm gonna call that one a gourd because I don't know, that one doesn't look very pumpkin-y to me. It's got a couple of stamps over here that can be tendrils and one that can be the stem. It has uh, a, one, a single stamp here that's gonna do three tiny leaves and then a larger leaf over here and a half leaf over here. So you can do a lot of scenery stamping with that imagery, you can turn it into a jack-o'-lantern if you want. This face would fit in the big pumpkin. It fits in here, and you can even kind of sneak it in on this one as well. It has two more foliage stamps. This one would just do some background greenery. This one um, has several different possibilities. One would be to flip it sideways and turn it into a branch that this crow is going to sit on. And of course, crows are very prominent imagery with harvest type um, stamp sets. It's the thing is titled Pick of the Patch and it does have a happy Halloween sentiment in it, but it does not have to be a Halloween stamp set. You're gonna see a lot of different things that are not Halloween things in the cards that I've made. Thanks so very, or thanks so much. Cutie pie. A harvest of blessings, you're the pick of the patch. So you can see this could be Thanksgiving. This is just giving gratitude. This, my goodness, could be a baby card, right? You're the pick of the patch can be just, you know, you're great for any anytime you want to send a, a greeting that says thinking of you. So uh, the punch over here actually punches four different shapes. It would punch out this stamped stem, or you can just punch the stem. It punches out this stamped leaf. And then it's got two pumpkin shapes on it. It'll punch out this big pumpkin and it will punch out this second sized pumpkin over here. And here they all are. So you can see the different sizes of the pumpkins. These are all sort of wider and more squat. This one is taller. And then there's that one I call the gourd. Here's the leaf images. Here's the stem images. There's the um, the sentiment images over here. I neglected to mention, but there's also this little splotchy thing. They can just do some background stamping, or you can use that on the pumpkin to add some spots. Got a lot of uh, pumpkins have speckled, you know, some of them are very smooth, but some of them are not smooth, right? And then I also wanted to show you the punched images. So there are the four punched images that come out of the punch itself. And then that's how they look. If you just take the shapes, this is how it looks if you stamp them, particularly if you stamp them on white paper. So you can see a little bit of the white around the edge of each of these things, but then it also can look really cool if you stamp them on colored paper as well. Then this one looks a little more 
whimsical maybe, and this one is much more muted because it doesn't have that white popping out at you. All right, so now you've seen what the stamp set and the bundle are going to do. In a minute, I'm gonna show you a bunch of samples. Most of them are pre-made. I am gonna do two demonstrations for you as a part of this class, this, this little product um, showcase here. I'm gonna make one card for you, and then I'm also gonna show you one kind of fun thing that you can do Look at that. Oh my gosh, can you believe all the cards I have to show? So here's the first one. Now for this one, I just focused on the fact that I've got this punched and stamped image down here, front and center, layered on a circle. This is the painted textures background stamp that I sponged some black on because I made this into a Halloween card and then that was gold embossed for the sentiment down there. So very simple, plain using the punched image. Here's another one that uses the punched image, but this time I layered three of them and turn it into a thank you card. So it doesn't have to be a Halloween card at all. And uh, you can see that they stamped the tendrils on the background piece of paper, but everything else is stamped and layered on the front of this card. So sweet. And these are the scalloped contours dies. I really like them for dressing up the edge of a, of a layer. And I thought that with the scallops on the top of this pumpkin, that that was a nice way to kind of pull the card together by adding some scallops on the layer itself. Now, this one was kind of spooky in terms of the feel of the card because of this background. Um, almost looks kind of spider webby because of the texture that's in there from the embossing folder. This one is just kind of clean and nice with a whimsical pumpkin. And then I tried to go for a little bit more of an elegant feel on here. So I gave it this nice neutral, dark neutral background. This is Pebbled Path. And then I did some heat embossing in gold for the sentiment down there. And I pulled in this real pretty ribbon down here that's got a vanilla and sheer part in the middle, and it's got some gold threads in it. Um, so I, I was trying to go for a little bit more of an elegant look on that one. All right, so these all were working with the punch. And there are certainly some images in here that the punch punches out these two. It doesn't punch out the rest of them. But you know what? These are not bad to actually use your scissors and fussy cut on because this is a long, easy curve to follow with your scissors. So that's what I did for this card. Uh, for the background, I gave it that exposed brick embossing folder. So it, um, it, it just breaks up the background. In other words, on both of these two cards, there's just a lot of flat surface that everything's on. And I wanted to kind of break that up visually for the eye. And so I used that embossing folder back there. And then I like this uh, exposed brick embossing folder because it's not clean and neat. It's got a real old rustic falling apart look, which is basically what happens in the fall, right? When all the leaves fall off the trees. So you're going to see a couple of other things happening on this one. I, I did fussy cut um, these two pumpkins. Actually, this one too. That big one is the only one that works with the punch. And then I did the leaves and that stuff is all just kind of layered up on there. This is a pecan pie uh, ribbon down here. Love the color on that one. Added a little bit of bling in there and put my sentiment down here on the bottom. So it's a harvest of blessings. But look at these pumpkins. Isn't that cool? And if you're saying, Katie, how? How did you do that? Because the surface, the reflective surface on these pumpkins is different than what your eye sees on the stamped and punched leaf over here. And that's because I did some clear embossing. If you didn't know, write down in your notes, this is a class, right? You're taking notes, write down in your notes that Stampin' Up's ink, their classic inks is juicy enough. Well, excuse me, it does work. It's only juicy enough if you've kept your pad juicy enough. Um, but the inks will stay wet long enough to hold the clear embossing powder on the um, on your project in time to actually do some heat embossing there. So yeah, the embossing is cool. And I'm going to come back and show you some samples um, to compare what it looks like with the embossing texture embossed as well as heat embossed. All right, I got another one over here. This one is also some fussy cut. This one I did a vertical stack of the pumpkins. And of course, these two work with a punch. And then these up here, I did have to fussy cut. The leaves are punched. Um, and then I came in with the with this image right here, this leafy image, and just stamped a leafy background down there and sponged a little bit of brown at the bottom to look like it's going to be the ground that those pumpkin, that pumpkin stack is sitting on. 
So this is a stack of pumpkins. Now we're talking techniques here. This doesn't have to be just pumpkins. It can be anything that you have that's a shape. This is layers of paper. You can get a similar look, layers of ink. In other words, it wouldn't really have worked if I had stamped one of the pumpkins on top of the other pumpkin because you would see the bottom image through it. But there's a technique that you can do called masking. And that's what I did on the next card. So for this one here, what I did, and I, I had wanted to get a, you can see what I did. I came in and used my scissors and fussy cut along the bottom edge of those pumpkins down there. And here's that uh, exposed brick embossing folder down here on that bottom piece. But what I did on these was I stamped this one first, and then I stamped it on a post note and covered it up. And then I stamped the yellow one. And what happened is when I pull the post-it note off, it didn't get covered by the yellow ink. And so it gives the visual impression that that yellow one is behind the green one. So lots of fun. I did that all the way across. So there was lots of fussy cutting here to create a bunch of different masks. It was kind of a slow process to add all of these things on here. But yeah, so you can see where I'm going with this. Oh my goodness, I have so much fun when I sit down and start to play and think of all the different ways that I can be adding um, adding ink to it, playing with layering the ink and layering the paper pieces. This one, I did a bunch of sponging around the outside. And then for this one, I actually had come in and um, punched the leaf and then sponged through the hole because you can see on here that you are not looking at the detail of the leaf. So in other words, I just sponged that through the hole but let me show you something while I've got my paper out here. So what I'm gonna show you real quick here is the reversible nature of symmetrical stamps. In other words, this is the detail that gets stamped when you use the stamp the way that it was intended, but you don't see that detail on, this, um, on the project right here. Any stamp that is symmetrical there's no difference chemically between one side to the other side of the stamp. So I'm just flipping that over and putting the detail side down. And now I've got the big background part of it. And now I've got that image without the detail in it. Pretty cool, right? Something to rush off to your stamp room and try and say, oh my gosh, that's so cool. You can use both sides of a photopolymer stamp. Yes, indeed only works when the stamp is symmetrical, okay? Well, actually it, it, it works any stamp, but if I wanted to come back and stamp the detail on top of it, in other words, stamp one side and then the other side on top of it, that's what only works if it is a symmetrical stamp. So lots of ideas you've seen already, and I have a, haven't even gone through half of my stack here. So before I go on, let me just explain a little bit about my thought process. When I get a new stamp set like this, I like to look at all the different parts to it, play with it, set up a little sheet like this so I can get it, so I can see what it does. And then I just start making lists. So I'll say, okay, these are the sentiments. I'll make a list of the sentiments in the set. And I'll say, what kind of inking techniques could I do with the stamps that are in here? What kind of unusual uses might I make of the images that are in here? What other products can I pair it with? Is there anything I can do punch art here and kind of play around with the punch itself, not with the stamp set, but just the punch alone? Um, and then I'll play around with some ideas for layouts. And actually, this is a PDF with all the different samples that I'm going to show you all on here. And anybody who does purchase this bundle from me, I will email you this PDF with all of the instructions that are on here. But one of the things we do, or one of the things I do, is I, I look about inking techniques. So we talked about masking over here. We talked about sponging, doing some layering for the background over there. One of the things on my list was rock and roll, which I never even got around to. I, I told you, I had so many ideas for this. I never actually even got a chance to do everything. Rock and roll would mean that you would stamp this in like one color and then take it to an ink pad and just catch the edges of it around the other ink pad and adds a second layer of a different color ink before you um, before you add it to your paper. So that could look really cool. I just never had time to get to it. But here's some other things I did have a chance to do. I, I looked at not just this stamp set, 
but what other product that Stampin' Up! has that it could play nicely with. And one of thing, of course, is specialty papers. So this is a dazzling paper. I think that's what they call it, more dazzling. But it's it's a specialty paper with, ooh, some, some awesome, fun, um, reflective properties in there. And then I just played with the leaves. So this doesn't even use the pumpkin, just uses the leaves, and I turned this into a fall card, and that's gold embossed for the um, harvest blessings. The next one, um, there's that same paper down there, that more dazzling. But look at this. It's perfect size to go with the, um, the, the, with the alphabet set, the little alphabet stamp set that we have right now. So just turn that into just a plain old fall card and throw on a little bit of that ribbon that you saw before, which, by the way, I have an offer for you for anybody who puts in um, a, a $40 order. Uh, I will give you a sample of that ribbon and a sample of this paper. This is awesome. You know, when you look at pumpkins, I don't, I don't know if you guys grow pumpkins. I live on a farm and we do grow pumpkins. And I'll tell you, they sit in the dirt so they get a little bit of discoloration from the dirt. But our pumpkins, they get all warty and they, they have so much really amazing, wonderful character to them. So this paper is called the Distressed Gold Paper, which last time I checked, uh, Stamp It Up is currently out of. But I have two packs. And so here's what I'm offering for anybody who decides they want to make a purchase until my supplies run out. This is what I will send you. I have taken this 12 by 12 paper and cut it into thirds. So we've got a four inch strip and then taken that um, four by 12 inch strip and cut it in half. So you will get a third of the piece of paper and I will send you a yard of this gorgeous ribbon that you've seen on a couple of cards already. All right, so that is for a $40 purchase for anyone who is interested. If you're ordering online, please use the host code. That just helps me out a little bit, but it doesn't stop you from getting the um, the share of the ribbon and the paper if you put in the order without it. It just it just helps me. So this is really cool, right? To add some, some texture, some visual texture to your project. Okay, let's go back to what, what else do I have in here? Oh, okay. So there's another way to add texture um, besides the specialty paper, and that would be to actually add texture to go back with an embossing folder. This is the stripes and splotches embossing folder. And what I did there was I, I ran the orange paper through the machine to get all the little bumpies on it. And then I came back with my ink and I inked over it. And of course the raised areas catch more of the ink than the, the lower areas. And so I got this fun card. And again, it's just a thank you card. It could be for any season of the year. The other thing I'm going to point out as you're playing around with it, this is what you pay me for, right? <laughs> uh, I love, I love to just play around with it. Try it this way. Try it that way. I put my stem on the front. I put my stem behind. So you can leave a comment and let me know whether you like it better with the stem one way or the other. And maybe it depends on what the project is. What's this one? Oh, <laughs> okay. So uh, this is just playing around with other product. So look at that, Linus's um, great pumpkin patch waiting for the great pumpkin to come. Uh, the reason I wanted to show you this is because this is the same embossing folder that I used on the moon. Look at the craters, isn't that cool and fun? But here, because the pumpkin is warty, the warts are sticking up, but here the moon is cratered and so I put the warts down. And then I did the same thing. I came back and sponged over a little bit. It probably isn't showing up very well. And it's very, very subtle, but it does it does make the paper look not flat and all one color. I think if I hadn't sponged, it would look more, it, it would look less natural. And I think it looks a little bit more natural that way. I don't know what we're saying on the sky for natural. I was trying to go for clouds and stuff in the sky. So I started with blue paper and I did it through the painted textures embossing folder again. So just got some... I don't know, texture up there in the sky. And then I went over it with darker blue ink. But look at that. Lots of fun pumpkins. And it looks like I forgot to put stems on any of them. So I suppose I ought to go back and do that also. All right, let's take a look at another sheet where I was doing some playing. All right, so here is that pumpkin, just plain and flat. Here it is with that um, stamped and the 
splotches embossing folder and here it is not stamped just plain with the splotches and I went over this one with the ink to give it a little bit more definition this is texture embossed this is heat embossed again the orange ink all of our inks are wet enough they stay wet enough on the paper that they will hold the embossing powder long enough for you to do the the embossing so we have stamped texture embossed stamped and texture embossed, just inked with a, a sponge dabber, heat embossed over here. And this is, this is heat embossed before I added the texture. So in other words, I took the flat piece of paper, heat embossed it, then ran it through the big shot or the, the um, embossing machine. Here, I embossed it first and then pushed it down into the Versamark pad and um, and then put the embossing powder on. So I, I really don't think I see any difference one way or the other. This one, I, the only reason I have this on here twice is because I realized that I had it in my embossing folder the wrong way. And so this is a cratered pumpkin. This is a warty pumpkin. And I must have, I don't know. I, I see a little bit of white around the warts. So I'm thinking maybe I embossed it and then came back and sponged it or stamped on it. I don't actually, I think that's what I did. I think I embossed it first and then stamped on the embossed piece. So the ink didn't quite catch the edges of that raised up area. Is there something underneath here? Oh yeah, there is. So what I have, oh, I know what's underneath here. This is so cool. So I told you this looked more like a gourd than it did a pumpkin. And this is just flat. This was stamped first and then run through the machine to emboss it. So you can see the little warts on there a little bit. Over here, I embossed it first. So all the warts were there and then it came down to stamp on it. So once again, you don't get as quite a good coverage that um, the stamp doesn't quite catch the bottom edges of the raised up area over there. Let's talk about this. This is another way to add some distressing some physical dimension to your pumpkin. All right, I have the materials here. I'm actually going to make a card for you and I'm gonna show you how I did this. Now, let me hold it up here so you can get a little bit more of a sense of um, what where we're going with this. First of all, you can see it's up on dimensionals, but the second, I hope you can tell that the sides are kind of bent down around that dimensional. So in other words, it's not sitting up here flat and level, it's kind of curved around the dimensional underneath it. And if you can look at the surface, it's not a flat piece there. I think I think the reflection is coming on the um, on the camera right now, but there's like lines and bumps and things in here. This is much more natural looking than a flat piece of paper like over here. So let, let me show you what I did to get that. And as far as the colors are concerned, this is one of the new in colors. This is Pebbled Path. I really love this. I'm so sad that it's an in color because that means it's only going to be around for a couple of years. And I, so it's really become sort of my go-to for, for dirt things. Well, there you go, Pebbled Path. I'm going to be using this tool as part of what I'm going to do to make that um, dimension on there. Here's that gorgeous paper, that distressed gold paper that I will give you two four by six pieces of and some of this ribbon. And we're going to use both of those on the card. It's going to be on a vanilla card front. I'm going to stick a little bit of uh, mossy meadow behind it over here. And we'll come back to that part in just a moment. Let's figure out what we're using from this bundle and get our stamped images and, um, and our punched images and see what we can do for that dimension. So I'm going to start by stamping both the pumpkin and the leaves and getting them punched out. Put on two ink pads here. Remember, I'm very much aware that you are paying me to play an experiment for you. So this is the dark paper and this is the dark ink tone on tone here. Okay, and then I have a little... Uh, cleaning pad over here. I'm going to do, this is old olive. We're going to just try that side by side and see what we get. I 
I really don't think there's much of a difference between them. So we're just gonna use those three. I'm not gonna stamp my stem. I'm just gonna punch the stem out. Right, in a minute, we're gonna come back and add the dimension to that. Let's get the rest of the card laid out here. Now this is vanilla instead of white because I do like that softer look for a fall card. And I'm gonna do a little bit of stamping on the inside. There's a super cute inside with lots of room to write a message, and it still has a cute little image on the front that goes on the inside. It's going to match what's going to go on the front. So let's talk about the front over here. <clears throat> like I said, we're going to use this really pretty ribbon. It, um, it's just called gold. Uh, let's see, satin edged ribbon. Okay, it's vanilla, vanilla and gold. All right, what I'm going to do, my plan is to have a little bit of this green peeking out from behind that paper, but mostly we're going to show off that paper and we're going to highlight it with that bow over there. Then I'm actually going to use the lines on my grid paper here to make sure that the two pieces are going together parallel. In other words, making sure that I am leaving the same amount of green showing all along there. So my lines of the gold lines up with the grid paper on this side and on that side. And then I'm going to add my ribbon to it. Now, <clears throat> we're going to put a sentiment down here in the corner. And my pumpkin is going to be layered up in the middle. And I decided to layer it on a circle, but not just a plain old circle. This is cut with a decal circle dies. So you can see what it does here. It cuts out um, this deckled edge all the way around. Now, I wasn't quite sure which one to use. I've got a sample up there that's using the larger one. So I decided to go with the smaller one on this project. And we'll see which one I like better afterwards. But the other thing, if you look at this, it's not just a plain flat piece of paper. Other times of the year, I have no problem using just a plain old flat piece of paper for a background. But in the fall, when you fall just to me is all kinds of messy imagery. I like to have a, um, a textured background here. I was going to show you these folders too. This is the exposed brick embossing folder. And this is the set of stripes and um, splatters embossing folder. This is the painted texture one over here. Uh, very, very cool. So anyway, this is like two skinny ones. They're not even full size, but they do great for little background strips. And that's what I did here. And then I guess I have the choice. Do I want to put those stripes going up and down so it kind of looks like a tree? Or do I want to do it this so it looks like wood paneling in a house? And I think I'm going to opt for um, up and down on this one, mostly because in my pumpkin, the lines on the pumpkin are also up and down lines. And so I just, I felt that was kind of complimentary. This is just going to be a thank you card. So I have thanks so much. And I'm going to put this down in that lower corner. All right, this is going to get raised up here in a moment. This is going to get tied underneath. And look how fun this go is. It's so versatile because I can tie it and then I can place it wherever I need it to be after it's all done. In other words, this will slide up and down on that uh, base piece. So we're just going to set that off to the side. This is going to kind of tuck underneath here. We'll mount that in just a moment, but let's get our pumpkin finished and assembled at this point. All right, so I want to get some dimension on here, and this is where I'm going to push on it with a stylus. Now, this is the Take Your Pick tool, and the Take Your Pick tool comes with some other ends. I also brought in, this is a Stampin' Pierce mat that Stampin' Up! sells, and I'm going to use that to do my pushing. And let's see here, the Take Your Pick tool, the, the various ends come out, this putty end unscrews, and there's some attachments you can get for that. Um, some of these you have to buy separate, but when you buy the tool itself, it actually comes with the three things that you see here. Comes with the putty end, 
comes with this end here, which let me just twist it. Oh, cool. Two in one. So it's got the pointy end and it's got the spatula end. And then this actually comes when you purchase it. It's got a stylus with a little end and a big end. And I'm actually going to use them both. So I'm going to start with a little end. And you can see how this works. If you don't have one of these, it's got these little projections and then it's got grooves over here and you just slide the groove into the projection and then twist and then it holds it on. All right, so I wanted my final project to actually show the definition of these lines. So from the front side, I'm gonna go over these two lines, mostly so that I can see them on the back. All right, so I'm adding some definition and right away when you push on a paper, now that paper isn't flat. In fact, if I just left it like that, that would actually look pretty cool because it's got the lines in it. But I'm going to flip it over now. And I don't know if you can see, I can see those lines that I pushed in it, which is going to be my guide using the big end of the stylus. And now I'm just going to pretend like it's crayon and I'm coloring crayon, marker, Stampin' Blends, paintbrush. So I'm filling in the area between the two lines that I created on the front side. And I'm just adding lines that mostly go up and down, but not entirely, to add dimension to it. Wrinkles, distressing the paper. And now from the front, look how cool that pumpkin looks. Doesn't that look really natural? I'm just so charmed by this. I think this is so fun. All right, so that's what I did to create my pumpkin. Super, super easy. These things, you, you probably have a stylus in your work area. If you don't get one of these, this is amazing. This tool, this take your picture. Love it. I, when it first came out in the catalog, I thought, why well, don't I need one of that? I've already got stuff that does what it does. And then once I got it, it was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm so glad I invested in it. All right, let me put this part of the card together quickly. All right, almost done here. So I'm going to put my stem on the back. So I'm going to add just a teeny little bit of the adhesive here and pop it in from the back side. And then to pop this up, because there's so much wrinkled dimension in there now, I am going to use dimensionals to layer this up on the circle. We'll just pop three of them on here quickly. Aren't you glad I'm fast forwarding through this? Because now it's going to go a little bit quicker than if you had just watched me make the whole thing. And I still have a stack of cards and um, things left to show you as well. Lots more samples. All right, I'm actually going to put this on with liquid glue. And the reason I'm using liquid glue instead of my tape runner, with the bumps in here, I just feel as though the, the tape isn't necessarily going to give it as secure a hold as the liquid glue does. So we'll just use this. And then we will pop that on right underneath there. This is a fun layout. A strip down the side, a circle in the middle, and then something else going over here if you want it. Um, it's just a very versatile thing. You can put any shape you want on there. I'm just putting a pumpkin on it. Okay, so now let's go back and add some of these leaves. And the leaves we're going to add on with little glue dots. Well, again, only I'm going to use the pointy end instead of the stylus end. So the way these are on the roll, uh, I feel as though back in the day, they used to come with the dots on this piece and you pulled this back to expose the dots. This roll, I don't know if it's just the new way they're doing it or if it's, um, if this one got rolled wrong, but the the dots are on this side. However, what I do so it doesn't make a mess in my box is I do put a um, like a belt around it just to kind of hold it. So it keeps this release paper, this extra protective layer covering up those dots so that there's no exposed dots for when it's sitting in the, um, in the box. Now I'm pulling it and looking for the next dot. Oh, there it is. And we'll put these other two leaves on here. And then we will go back to looking at some other samples that I have to show. Now, remember this is up on dimensional. So I'm gonna stick this one underneath there. 
And then we're going to add the other one right on top. So there'll be one leaf sitting up on the top with the stem, and then the other two leaves will look like they have fallen down. This one, we'll just let it kind of sit on the um, base of the pumpkin itself. So there is that card. And I said I used the smaller deco frame, and I was going to compare it and see which one I liked better. So let me pull that other one in, and you can take a look at the two of them together. OK. So again, if you've got a, a choice on there, let me know whether you like that smaller circle or the larger one better, but basically same card, right? Isn't this, all? you want this, right? You want that ribbon and you want that paper. So, so pretty, perfect for fall cards. All right, I have more samples. All right, so we have some more samples to look at here. And remember that PDF where I listed out all my ideas? One of the things I like to do on there is to say, how can I use this product in a way that maybe wasn't exactly what it was intended for? Well, people often take gourds and turn them into birdhouses. So I just um, made a birdhouse out of this one. I know it kind of looks like a messy, floppy hair on top of there. Maybe I should have punched those, but I was just doing this quick. These are not like awesome finished cards. These are just thrown together real quickly to give you some ideas for how to do things. Um, so I put this bare branched image right here. I put it in coming from the side. If you remember me talking about masking on this sample, remember me talking about masking on this sample right here, where I stamped this big pumpkin on a post note, cut it out, laid it down on top of the stamped image, and then stamp the yellow one, pull the post-it note off. And where the post-it note was, there's no ink from the yellow, so it looks like it's behind. That's control. You use masking to mask off an area where you don't want ink to be. So I will show you what I did on here. If you look at this tree branch, you'll see that on both sides, it's got two projections up, two projections down. That's the way the stamp is, right? Two up two down. Well, if you look at this one right here, you'll see there's only one up. It's missing that other one. So what I did was I stamped again on a post-it note. So I'm going to show you how I did that masking. It works with a post-it note or typing paper, but you want really thin paper. You do not want to use cardstock for this because when you bring a paper, uh, a stamp down and it's going to partly cover the paper and partly not cover the paper, it's not going to get good coverage right at that boundary when it's going between the two different paper layers. So cardstock is too thick. You want to use um, you want to use a post note. All right, for this thing, my branch was heading off to the right and I want to keep I, I don't want to have the image of that upper branch and so that's what's going to get cut off. So I'm actually going to do it this way. I'm going to stop and think for just a minute. All right, what I'm doing is I'm masking off enough room to have my birds sit on the branch. So I want to keep that to cover it up. But when I stamp on my paper, I want to make sure that I have enough room for the whole sideways part of the branch to get the ink on my paper. And of course, I do want those things on the end. This is the only thing I want to cover up. So now I save my sticky part. I decide where I want my branch to go. Bring the thing back in. That lined up so that the part of the branch that's going up that I can see is going to be directly on top of that area that's being masked off. Should have done this in different colors to really illustrate the concept. Okay, so I stamped my branch there, but the post note has accepted part of the ink preventing it from going to the paper. And now I've got a branch that doesn't have that upward projection and there's enough room to go back and add my little bird in there. I made a ton of ideas and then afterwards I came up with one more thought, but you know, we did Linus's great pumpkin patch. How about if we turn this one vertical 
or Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. Okay, back to the stack. Again, like I said, trying to think of ways to use the images in ways that maybe were a little bit not the obvious. So how about this one? That's not that's not a fall card at all. That's definitely not Halloween, but it's not even a fall card. It's just these two little images right here. It's my tree or my branch. And then it's these little speckles over there adding little flower dots. Fun. So fun. That's my favorite thing to do is think about different ways to use things. What have I got here? Ooh. <laughs> Looking at that thing. If I turn it this way. Oh, there's all kinds of things it could be. One thing it could be, it could be nose on a pumpkin. So here's that branch again. These are just circle punches. There's the face. A pumpkin face turned into a snowman face, and we got a punched out nose form. Or this is white heat embossed on black, the pumpkins themselves, and again, with an orange carrot for the nose. So fun. So fun. I love thinking about different ways to use it. Here, how about this one? Let's see. So this one, there's that pumpkin. And let me show you what I did to make the pie crust. So we're going to make an orange pie crust. I did this in vanilla but I'm gonna do this in orange. And what I did was I wanted the bottom because that's got the scallops like you see on a pumpkin pie, but that was way too tall for me. So I wanted to shorten it up a little bit. So I came in and used my post note again. This is kind of a big piece. Because it's coming in from the side, what I'm going to do now is just to pull it up like that. I mean, it's already got the scallops, but this this is way too high. So the way to orient it in the punch is like that. And now I've got a smaller piece that works perfectly for my, um, my pie pan, which I fussy cut. I've got one more card to show you, and then I've got two more um, idea sheets to show you. No so there's my pie. And look at these are the tendrils that would have gone up from the, um, the pumpkin and just turn them into steam. You could do that with a coffee mug and you could have steam going up from the coffee mug. How about if you stamp them in green and turn them into, um, into cactus? And then this is just some imagery. I think that came from earthen textures. All right. So we've looked at these samples. Let's take a look at these ideas over here. I do have one more product I'm going to show you, Gilding Flakes, and I'll show you that in just a moment. But before, I'm going to get all this stuff out of the way because I need lots of room to deal with the Gilding Flakes. You're going to see a demonstration with them. Um, but I'm going to flip this out first because I talked about that pumpkin stem and then turned it sideways for the nose of the snowman. What else could it be? How about eyebrows? You know, turn them up and you got an angry guy, turn them down and you got a sad face guy, or it looks like puppy ears, right? Could be like the Three Stooges, a haircut over there. Um, take that leaf, turn it into a bow tie. Or, you know, bring the kids in. Do you stamp with kids? I stamp with children. And children love to do stuff like that. Take punched out pieces and just play with them and see what they get. So there's the pumpkin stem, there's the leaf. You could do something with a little forest and little trees. Or cut out that middle bulb, flip it upside down, use the blotchy stamp over here and make some toadstools. That could go in the background of something. Start putting these pumpkin shapes. These are the two that are punched out. Start putting these pumpkin shapes together and gosh, what can we do? We can turn it into aliens, we can turn it into monsters. We can give them arms, stick this thing underneath here, or maybe turn it into a bug. Would those be wings? Or if he's sitting up and these are the bottoms of his feet showing? I don't know. I'm just really into shapes. I love doing stuff like that. So this is all stuff that I never had a chance. I didn't have time. From the time I told you I was going to come in and do a product review on this to when I ended up saying, okay, I have to stop playing. I just have to film it because I had way too many ideas to actually make them all work. But I hope I'm giving you some ideas. Right, last demonstration before we're all done. Let's go back to elegant pumpkins. So here's gold foil and here's gold foil embossed. Looks cool. Here's the distressed gold paper, which again, you get a couple of wonderful samples from me. You can't order this right now, it's just out of stock. It will be back. 
Um, but I have some. I can give you two pieces of it to play around with for a $40 order during October. So, But for the entire month of October, I'm going to um, give you the two pieces of the Distressed Gold and the Yard of the Ribbon. So if you don't have the paper and you like this look, and there it is embossed, Okay, you got the visual depth with the differentiation in the paper, and then you got even more depth with the light reflection on the embossing over here. If you like that look, and you don't want to put in a $40 order, and you don't have this paper, but you have some other things, what else could you do? These are gilding flakes. Look at the awesomeness on this as well. All right, I've pulled in a piece of white paper that we are going to use to do the pumpkin. I certainly don't need this large of a piece of paper, so I'm just going to cut off a little bit down here. Now, this is the double sticky adhesive sheets that Stampin' Up! sells. This is a great product. It comes 12 in a sheet. Um, it's huge. They, they last you forever. So I bought a second one in case and I'm still working on the first one over here. So let me pull this thing off and just uh, show you what you get with it. So the paper actually, it, it's got like adhesive squeezed in between two sheets. And I don't know if you can see here, but there's like a little slit along here and here. So the whole way down, it's got this thing that just makes it easy because if you don't want the whole thing, you can pull it up easier. All right, so watch what's gonna happen. All right, this is release paper. This is release paper. And there's sticky adhesive between the two. So I'm going to put my finger down there and you can see it's not falling off. Okay. So that sticky adhesive is in between there. And what I want to do is, in order to make the gilding flakes, which are in this box, stick to my project, I need adhesive. You can use any adhesive. You could write your name with a, um, with a liquid glue. Write your name with a liquid glue and you can rub the gilding flakes on. You could take your tape runner and run a straight line of the tape runner and then rub the gilding flakes on and you've got a, um, a gold uh, line on your paper. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to put my paper on, very carefully exposing this. This is what I'm gonna punch my pumpkin from. Lay that on there. So now the adhesive is on the back side of this piece of paper. And I want to get adhesive on my scissors. So I've pulled that other front paper, the one that's just the release paper, the, I don't know, I don't know what to call it, release paper, the, the saving stuff. I just pulled that back over to kind of protect my scissors so they don't get so much sticky on them. And then I can see through here. I don't know if you can. I can see through there. So I can see that I'm cutting along the lines edge of the paper. All right, don't need that. Nothing sticky on here, right? Because I put the paper in on top of the adhesive. So this is just garbage. And in a minute, I'm going to pull the um, adhesive off the back of this. And then the sticky will be showing. Because remember, I put this down on the sticky. The sticky's on the back side of this. But this release paper is still protecting it right now. Protective paper. Maybe that's a better word for it. So in a minute, we will expose that. All the stuff that you see in here came tightly packed in this little, this little jar. Once I first used it and pulled some out, there's no way I was getting them all back in. This stuff is super, super lightweight, very, very fluffy. Don't sneeze. Don't wave your hand rapidly across it because you'll have little clouds of the gilding flakes um, flying up. And then let's expose this. Okay. So here's my other piece of paper that's nothing. We'll get that in the garbage. And this is my sticky side now. All right, all I'm gonna do is throw those gilding flakes on it. Actually, I'm gonna put this down in here so it can pick up the gilding flakes. It's a little more complicated than what you see because now I have to scrape them all off. Uh, there's, there's a lot of static electricity here. And there's way more on there than what's needed for this project. And there's a few places where I still see the glue. So we'll just rub the gilding flakes on. I don't want this to come off in the hands of the person who's going to be um, receiving the project. So I'm just going to rub them all on, making sure that they're stuck nice and tight to the adhesive. And then I'll go along the edge and make sure I've picked up all the extra areas. Oh, 
got some showing down here. We'll throw some more on. Oop, oh, you know what? I didn't catch the adhesive on it. It must have come off in my hands when I was showing you that it was sticky. That's all right. We just won't punch our pumpkin from that part. Yeah, you definitely want to do this over a larger surface anyway. So uh, the reason I got this plastic tray, because this became my work area when I'm working with the gilding flakes. There. Just pop this right in here. And, you know, you've got the visual on it. So if you like any of the visual part of the way the gold leafing is laid on there better than another, you can kind of play around with it. And if you've done a big piece like this, save it and use a quarter inch um, round circle punch and you can make some really pretty flower centers too. All right. There is my gold leaf pumpkin. Isn't that pretty? So here is our gilded pumpkin. And this is the PDF for anybody who does buy the bundle. I will make sure that you get a copy of this PDF. It's got all the ideas on there, except for the Charlie Brown Christmas tree that I just thought of while I was talking to you. It's got some ideas for some simple layouts. And then it's got photographs of all of the cards that I showed you. And who knows, if you make sure that you like my Facebook, follow my Facebook page or subscribe to my YouTube channel. There might be even more things that are posted with this. And then a quick reminder that I do have a gift for you in the month of October. Any $40 order placed in the month of October, I will send you two sheets of that uh, distressed gold paper and a yard of that ribbon as my gift to you. It's kind of an awkward um offer at the moment because we do have a join special during the month of October as well. And so I'm going to have to come back and do another video on that join special, but it's Stampin' Up! has been around for 35 years. Let's talk anniversaries for just a moment. Didn't make any anniversary cards, but Stampin' Up! has been around for 35 years. So they're doing a special during October, 35% um, off the starter kit. You get the same amount you always get, just pay 35% less, or pay the amount that you would always pay, but during this month, you get 35% more. Your choice, whichever way you want to go, and the starter kit can be anything that you want. You can throw the gilding flakes and those embossing folders and the um, and the, the bundle in there. You can, you can make it anything that you want. So message me your questions about the starter kit. Again, anybody who buys the bundle, I will make sure you get the PDF. Anybody who places a $40 order this month, um, you will get that sample of the product for me. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow my Facebook page, whichever place you're seeing me. Thanks for watching. I hope you get some really incredible ideas. Bye for now.